<clears throat> All right. Well, hey, everybody. Grim Green back here today. I just needed a change of scenery, man. My office was feeling a little bit boring and a little bit poorly lit, and I have a great, well-lit corner of my living room. So what the hell? Shoot some reviews, man. What we're going to be talking about today is this right here. This is the Valerian tank from UWell, and it is, you guys, it is a stellar, stellar sub-ohm tank. I get very decent flavor from this, and it has nice, smooth, swooshy airflow. I'm a big fan of this tank from top to bottom. It has some weird little, uh, you know, things going on in there. There's some pins and whatnot. We'll get to all of that in just a second. In order to do that, what we're going to do is go up close as we always do. Yeah. Quick, short, upy, closey time, right? <clears throat> all right. Yeehaw. What we have here is the Valerian sub ohm tank from UL. Just going to go over this from top to bottom real quick, including some pins and weird stuff that you put in the inside. We'll get there when we get there. Airflow adjustable on the bottom like that. There's one, two, three airflow holes on the bottom and they're adjustable. This isn't necessarily clicky or anything. It's very glidey, but it stays open and it stays closed anywhere in between. Yeah, it'll stay, but it's a little soft. It's a little soft and glidey. I tend to rock mine full open all the time. So this doesn't, ah, eh, this doesn't really bother me because I never really use this airflow adjustment. I just rock it full open all the time. The drip tip on top is just a standard, you know, 510 drip tip. It's not uh, goon compatible. It's not anything else other compatible. It's just, you know, regular 510 drip tip. Now the top fill system on this is my favorite top fill system from any sub ohm tank. You see this button right here? You just press it and the top opens. And then you have two, you know, good size kidney shaped juice fill holes there. And you just put your juice there and you blend, and you fill it up and you go click. And then that's it. That's it. That's literally it. It's so unbelievably easy. But let's take this apart now. Let's look at the coil head and let's look at the pins that go in the middle. This tank does come completely apart for easy rinsing, but try as I might, man, I cannot get this glass off of here. I've tried all sorts of tools and pushing this glass down off of these o-rings and twisting it and i don't want to break it but i'm trying to be gentle and i'm using a lot of force like pressing this down like trying to get that glass off of these o-rings i'm assuming this glass does come off of these o-rings but try as i might man i cannot get this off using any tools i don't want to break it so it doesn't really bother me i'm just leaving it on there but you know i'm like i said i'm assuming it comes off i just bah, i can't figure out how to do it man 0.15 ohm coil head on the inside big juice wicking holes this is 0.15 they say 95 to 120 watts, although I don't know if I would go that high with it. O-rings on the top and bottom, if either of these are missing, you're going to need O-rings on the top and bottom of this coil head. One thing that's interesting about this coil head is because these juice flow holes are so tall, they have a minimum juice level thing on marking, you know, measurement on this coil head. When you're vaping through your tank, you kind of don't want to let your juice get too low. I vaped it lower than this. I've actually vaped this tank dry a couple of times, but when your juice level gets below this minimum marking right here, your chance of, you know, dry hits increases quite a bit because the juice isn't covering all of this cotton and your coil goes all the way up through the middle. And if juice is only very touching the bottom, there's a chance that your top could go dry. It's not detrimental to vape past this minimum line, but if you do that, then you run the risk of getting more and more dry hits, which the Valerian does not supply you with in unless you want them. So here's the base where your coil head is gonna screw in. That's your contact right there that this contact on the bottom is going to uh, come in contact with. I felt like I said contact way too many times right there. And this little contact down here just comes right out. I'm gonna give it a little press here with a tiny screwdriver and yeah, it just drops right out. And the reason is, is you can choose multiple ones to go in here and it doesn't affect anything on the bottom. It just affects things in the middle. You can jam this guy in here. So now you have this, uh, well, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure we all know what that looks like, but it goes right through the center of your coil head. You see that? Now you have this spoke kind of going through the center of your coil head. It also comes with a different looking one, a more, you know, 
corkscrewy looking guy. This goes in here as well. That becomes your new 510. And now you have a corkscrewy guy kind of going through the middle of your coil head. Now, you well says these are to improve and change your flavor experience. I truly and honestly have not noticed a whole world of difference really at all. I mean, nothing that changes the flavor. I don't feel like these change the flavor at all. But what I do notice is that they do change the airflow. When I first put this tank together, I was just rocking the standard, you know, non-spirally, non-dildo-y, you know, just regular old 510 connection down there. And it was fine and it was great. And then I thought, well, I might as well try out those other ones, right? Like they look really gimmicky, but I'll at least try them out. This little corkscrewy guy, right? here, I have found that this really makes the airflow a lot smoother for some reason. Using the other one, the airflow was fine, but when I put this one in, I found out, I found it got a lot smoother. This one, no idea. Didn't notice any huge differences. You know what? Let's try this one out for now because I've been rocking the spirally corkscrew guy here because it's my favorite one because I felt like it gave me, you know, fine flavor and some really nice smooth airflow. But right now, we're going to rock this little, uh, well, I mean, come on. We're going to rock this one in here. So I'm going to put the coil head on here. I'm going to saturate it with some juice. Beep, boop, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop, boop. And then I'm going to put some juice in here. Beep, boop, boop, boop. Just some juices, just some liquid in there. There's no need to flood it. You just kind of want to get it a little bit wet on the inside. Juice, 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 and juice, juice, juice. Oh, another one. Juice, juice, juice. And then it's just a matter of reattaching the rest of the tank using this fantastic little locks, lock button, pop it up and, and fill it thing. And then you take your juice bottle and you just fill up the whole damn tank. You just, you just fill it up. Also got a rubber, uh, you know, gasket O-ring in here to maintain that vacuum. The only downside of this sort of pop it on, pop it off, sort of press the button and open it is they'll get, they'll, they'll be juice here. You know, after a few repeated uses and fillings, you're going to get a bunch of juice up here. I just take a rag or a paper towel, boom, wipe it off, fill it up, snap it back shut, and it maintains that vacuum. It maintains the integrity very, very well. So yeah, really super easy to put together, really super easy to fill. What I'm going to do is attach this to a mod. We're going to get back out to normal view. We're going to open the airflow and yeah, we're going to vape this thing. So a few things I didn't mention in the uppy closey time, it is uh, 25 millimeters in diameter. It's got a five mil capacity, Pyrex glass tank, all full stainless steel construction, and it has the best top fill system, I mean, honestly, that I've seen in a sub-ohm tank. It doesn't get any easier than pressing this button, having the top flip open and going bleh, and then closing it and just vaping away. Like I said, really smooth, swooshy airflow. It feels very, very nice. This is a 0.15 ohm coil head in here. I have it set at about 80 watts on my new Loch Ness mod and great, it's a great vape. When I vape this, there's literally nothing to complain about. If you're taking some really hard drag, sometimes, sometimes the airflow gets a little bit loud, but what I've found is I close it off a little bit, like, I don't know, almost even halfway, and you still have three big airflow inlets. It makes the vape smoother, it makes the vape a little bit more flavorful, and it makes the vape a little bit warmer as well. And it also helps keep down that little bit of noise that happens in there. As for the pins that go through the center, ah, I don't know, I don't care. They don't really change the flavor. They change the airflow a little bit. The one that I like to use is like, you know, the bulbousy one, not the corkscrew one and not the flat one, but the bulbousy one. I'm just calling it the bulbousy one because these, these don't have any names and they're not like numbered or anything. It's not like pin number one, pin number two, or pin number three. It's the bulbousy one. I feel like it's smooths out the airflow just a little bit. I honestly didn't notice a huge difference. I went, well, the airflow is a little bit smoother now. But honestly, I got the same vape from this tank using all three of those pins, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because it is a really good vape. It kind of just makes those pins a little bit 
eh, superfluous. Like, I don't really need those. I don't notice a huge enough, enough difference to where I'm like, I'm vaping on the corkscrewy guy and I think, oh, you know, you know what? I really, I really need to switch this up and change the pin in the middle. It does not, not, not drastically improve or ruin your vape experience in any way. The Valerian vapes great on its own without the, the pins. The pins are, I don't, I don't care about them. This tank does tear through juice though. I can sit and vape this tank, I mean, just done, just in one session, sitting on the couch, watching a half hour TV show, just boom, like through this whole tank. It is a sub ohm tank and it just plows through a lot of juice. Like I said in the up and closey, they have that tiny little mark on there that's like, don't vape your juice below this line. I vaped my juice below that line and you get the occasional dry hit. So it's a good idea when you see the juice getting low to that line, just, it's so easy. You pop the top, you fill it the rest of the way up and you pop it back down, you have nothing to worry about. Overall, dude, I really like this tank. I really like this tank a lot. I think this could be one of, if not the best sub ohm tank I've used this year. I did also really, really like that Horizon Tech Duos sub ohm tank, but I think the Valerian is a slightly better sub ohm tank than that Horizon Tech Duos, just by a little bit. It's not by like leaps and bounds. It's got like just very slightly more dense, saturated feeling vape and just very slightly more flavor and just very slightly smoother airflow. And if we're gonna talk about the flavor real fast, the flavor is good, but it's not amazing. It's not like some sort of, uh, you know, flavor tank. It's a sub ohm tank. It's meant for clouds, bro clouds, and you will be able to taste your juice. Whatever juice you put in here, you'll be able to taste it and go, yeah, that's that's my juice. That's what I put in there and, and I can taste it in this tank. And no real vape budget hands needed on this tank. I found it all over the internet from anywhere from like 40 to 50 bucks, 39.95, about 39 to 45 seems to be like the, the popular price for this. So, you know, Google around and I'll throw some links down in the description so you can check it out if you're interested. But I have really, really enjoyed this tank. I didn't know that the Valerian tank was coming out. The last thing you well released was like the Crown 3, which was fine. It was pretty good. And I was like, oh, uh, another sub ohm tank from UL. But holy crap, after vaping on this tank for this long, this is an amazing sub ohm tank. It is really easy to set up, really simple, really straightforward. You just fill it up and you will have a great vape experience with a very, very low, very, very low level of fiddling. So yeah, there you go. It is what it is. It's the UL Valerian. I, I love it. I've been using it. I'm going to keep using it. This is just a fantastic vape coming very highly recommended. I might even go so far as to give this sub ohm tank one single banana sticker uh, in honor of its, I don't know, it's good. It's it's, it's just a damn good vape. Anyway, enough rambling. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll throw links down in the description. And uh, as always, yeah, let's keep on vaping. So hey everybody, good, uh, what, 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 what?